right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of On the Delo. This is episode 128. 128. I hear it takes about 500 episodes to uh, become really good at this. So uh, bear with me and thank you for listening, all of you regular subscribers. I know my last one, um, that went off really well, actually, the uh, sobriety one. Actually, no. The, well, I haven't released the AI one yet, which, you know, if you listen to the last episode, it'll be that one. But my one on sobriety, the, the 10 uh, things that I've learned learn through sobriety uh, seems to be hitting a chord with a lot of people. So I'm doing a couple more solo podcasts. It seems to be a little bit of a um, quagmire sometimes to get guests in here and, and actually guests that I'm interested in and kind of want to hang with. Uh, I love hanging out with Jeremy Scott, who is my um, business partner with the uh, Built Different you know, Mastermind, and we're doing coaching. And we've got a whole bunch of really cool stuff that we have uh, decided to implement on that. So that's, that's that's always a work in progress. If you're not uh, reinventing yourself, you're pretty much, you know, dead. So we're just reinventing and doing some stuff and, and enjoying it. Um, so I got that going on. Uh, you know, insurance business is insurance business. It is what it is. I've uh, been really busy doing that for 30 years. And because I've put 30 years in, the compounding interest that we talk about all the time, the effect of that has just really blown up. And I've got a great staff and people handling a lot of the ins and outs. I got the tech company. I've got coaching. I've got now a new book that's coming out. And the antithesis for this was when I picked up uh, the Certified Health Nuts book, um, Ripped at 50. I picked that up. I think I was like 40. I was 49 at the time. Maybe I was 48. And um, I just decided at that point in time, I'm like, dude, that guy's shredded. I'm going to meet him and I'm going to get ripped by 50. And guess what? Both of those things happened. Boom. Uh, meeting him wasn't that big of a deal because he did live in Sedona at the time. Then he ended up coming down to Scottsdale. So I, I, I'm going to have him back on the uh, podcast. Troy Casey is his name. He's a, he's a very interesting and amazing, beautiful human and very giving. So excited about that. But that leads us into what I'm going to call this podcast right now, the 3F method slash back to basics. And it really comes down to living the life that you deserve. And, you know, and, and all the time that I've been working and doing things, I have actually structured my life in a way that has been either very, uh, let's just say formulated and structured or very chaotic. And believe it or not, even the chaos was structured. And what I mean by that, if you listen to my drinking podcast, um, when you structure chaos, it, your, your chaos is amazing. And so I would structure the fact that, okay, cool. Tonight I'm going to go out and drink. I know I'm going to get, uh, you know, shit faced and I'm going to, you know, go and do this, this, and this. So it's really weird to think like, um, you know, when I would go out and party and do all those things that I would have a structure to it because I, I still had responsibility and I still did show up for work and do stuff that I needed to do. I mean, it always was just one of these things where I treated, you know, alcohol and, and bad food and all these things more or less as a, as a reward. And my body always recovered from it. Uh, my lack, you know, lack of sleep, my body recovered from it. I mean, there was no, there's no issues when I was in my early twenties and thirties. And so, um, if there were, they were, they were masked by the, the youthfulness of who I was at the time. Well, that don't happen anymore. So I had to make a change and I had to create some stuff. Um, a while back, I wrote this book. It's called The 3F Method. And I've got a copy for anybody listening. If you just want to you know, hit me up. I can certainly give this. It's really a workbook. And there's also another book that's online at IamTheDelo.com, which is where all of my um, coaching materials and information about the other things that I do is. But you can download this book for free. This is a book for you uh, to have. It's something that I wrote. And the 3F method really comes down to three things. It's food, fitness, and focus. And the big point that I want to drive home about those three things is that uh, I, I feel like... Um, I had to get back to basics. Now, again, I'm not telling any of you all what to do. And, and I have a lot of friends in the health and wellness industry that 
you know, have companies that do the cold plunge and the sauna and uh, just, you know, what the the, uh, um, the snorting of oxygen, uh, flower essence. I mean, all these great things. And, and I think that all of those things are wonderful, but I think sometimes what ends up happening is that we get so over bombarded with a whole bunch of stuff that we think that we have to do it all in order to be healthy. And, you know, the reality of the situation is that none of this stuff was really around or if it was around, it was more around in a very basic and natural context. So, you know, if you're out in the desert in the heat, you're pretty much in a sauna, right? You didn't really need to go buy a big, the big wood case that my wife and I bought. And now I have since given it to Jeremy Scott because we don't want it in the house anymore. It just, you know, as great as it is and great to sweat. And again, I'm not against any of that. It still was 20 to 30 minutes of my day that I'd rather be doing something else, i.e. Uh, sleeping or playing guitar or just meditating, whatever. So again, I'm not downplaying or knocking any of these things. I'm just saying, in, from my experience, I don't need to do any of those to be at ultimate, ultimate health. Because right now, I'm what I feel at 50, the ultimate health. And I don't do any of that stuff. And if I do do it, it's more like a treat and it's more like a social sort of, um, let's just say, uh, event for me to do and to be with other people that are healthy. And it's not like a, um, a habitual thing that I feel like I need to do. And if I don't do it, oh my God, my health is, you know, it's going to, it's going to hell, right? So that, um, to me has been very relieving and very relaxing to just know that, okay, cool. I don't have to jump in the cold plunge every day. Again, I know a lot of you probably listen to Joe Rogan and you hear he goes, you know, into the cold plunge every morning for, you know, however, two minutes, three minutes before he does anything that wakes him up. That's great. That works for him. I think it's beautiful. Um, again, not something that's necessary, nor is it something for me. I did try the cold. I hate the cold. I'm not getting in the cold. It, it just absolutely sucks. I, give me a hot shot shower, baby. Let's go. So um, that's just kind of a perspective. So then when we get back to basics and we talk about the three Fs, again, food, fitness, focus, let's talk about the basics in those three things. And the reason why I'm talking about this on this podcast now is, well, I'm going to just tell you the truth. It's a lead magnet, okay, for you to download this darn book, enjoy it, and get to know a little bit more about me and um, also know that I'm going to be launching another book, which is just written and going through um, all the editing and stuff now called Reignite Your Spark, you know, just getting started. Um, and, and again, the antithesis with that, with that was me reading Troy's book and getting excited about it and saying, you know what, I can do this as well. So Reignite Your Spark, that will come out this fall. We're going to have um, classes that revolve around all of that that's going on. And there's going to be a lot of stuff in Reignite Your Spark that has everything to do with rediscovering who you are, you know, really sitting down and understanding who you are and why you're doing doing what you're doing and is it in alignment with your passion and your skill set of who you want to be when you grow up you know I, I think I'm actually finally getting there and I still have a lot of work you know it's going to talk about you know crafting your ideal schedule it's going to talk about self-care and personal health it's going to talk about staying agile and athletic and 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 the role of mentorship and coaching so these are just a lot of the um, contextual things that will be in the book and then also to follow the courses and the things that I have implemented, learned from, made mistakes from, gotten my ass kicked from, and now want to give this back to you and, you know, really make a difference in the way that my personality and, and how I feel that I can do it to, you know, to help others. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let me take a sip of this. Oh. I'm on fire. I just died. Like I talk fast when I'm excited. This is very exciting stuff. <laughs> so the three F method. All right. <clears throat> when we talk about food, okay, again, let's talk about nutrition. Let's talk about, you know, let's talk about the fact that um, intuitive eating is so important. I think you can relate to this. I know I can. Um, if you can't, then cool. You, you have a gift. But, you know, if I go out and I have like, let's just say a very healthy organic dinner, I'm most of the, I mean, now I pretty much eat, you know, in, I, I've eaten at every restaurant and everything, but let's just say I go out, I have a piece of salmon, I don't know, some wild rice and some asparagus. I know when I eat that, barring the fact that they don't just douse it in a whole bunch of, you know, chemicals or anything else. Um, again, it's all about how you show up and order and make sure contextually that they, they do that and listen, but you go to a healthy restaurant and, and you know, you're not going to 
going to get sick. You're going to feel good afterwards. You will feel nourished. Um, if you're at a point in your, um, let's just say, eating anthology of you know methodology, I just kind of made all that stuff up. But point being is, if you're at a good point in your life, you know that that's going to fill you up and you're going to be good. But if you go and you eat, let's just say, you know, a big bucket of nachos with any and everything that you're imagining right now on top of them, along with the cheese crisp, along with an enchilada, along with maybe a piece of pie afterwards, you know that you're going to feel in the moment amazing, right? I mean, doesn't that sound good? And trust me, I, I even just recently, like the last four months, I did that with my wife uh, probably twice. I was so sick for the rest of the day. So again, it's taking that momentary um, sense of like, uh, let's just say awesomeness, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like sex, you know, in the moment you're like, oh yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden you get done and you're just like, oh God, you know, you're tired and you feel I, no different different than just eating, to me, eating bad food and wanting to take a nap, you know, afterwards and, and feeling like crap the rest of the day. And then the next day you have the regrets, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I just kind of laughed because I just made the analogy that back in my single days that, yeah, anyways. So that's, I mean, when you're looking at food and you're looking at you know, being, uh, let's just say simplistic and basic with your food. It's just one ingredient stuff and it's doing that thing and it's enjoying it and it's asking the questions and having fun with that. So talk a lot about that, but remember food is just fuel and, and nourishment. And, and also I know it can be pleasure as well, but there's no reason why we can't get pleasure out of good foods and reacclimating and relearning our system. I know I had to do that because honestly, like before I, you know, turned 50, I wasn't eating horribly, but you know, in my 40s, but before that, I just ate like shit. I mean, I just ate, you know, and I thought I was eating great, but I just wasn't reading ingredients or labels or, and just all that sort of stuff just kind of, you know, went to the wayside. So, that's food. When you look into when you look into fitness, you know we've talked about this, and I, I know Jeremy's talked about this a lot in his podcast. Fitness has to do with your season of life. I really think so. So. If you look at all these professional, you know, sports teams, um, actually, we just watched the thing on the Dallas uh, Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, right? Um, there's like the documentary. And believe it or not, it wasn't me. I could care less. My wife was really into it. And uh, what I did notice and what you do see, not like, you know, along with cheerleaders, football players, basketball players, what, what, what is the one commonality that all of these, you know, human beings have? Yeah, they're in their 20s. They're young. They're prime. They can bounce, you know, after, um, you know, getting slammed on the floor or, or pushed into a, a board or, or, you know, jumping from, a, um, from another person's body and doing a backflip. And a lot of these people end up having surgeries later on or, they have brain damage or whatever it is. Again, sidebar. What, the point that I'm trying to make is that our fitness is really dependent, I believe, on the season of life that we're in. I am not doing the stuff that I was doing in my 20s, nor do I want to. And I think it's coming to that understanding and that realization and that rationalization that it's okay to be where you're at now and to let go of where you were you know, at before because that's just how it is, right? I don't see when I was when I was in my 20s, I didn't look at, you know, a bunch of 50-year-olds and say, "Oh, wow, that must suck that you can't, you know, do all of these crazy things that I'm doing." I, it just wasn't a reality. It wasn't a mindset. It wasn't anything that I worried about. And the thing is, it's like sometimes we'll get in our own heads and be like, "God, I got to be the greatest at this at, you know, at all times at all things." No, you don't. And no, nobody really cares. They just don't. And especially for the average human being like we all are, are probably listening to this. Um, it's it's not even about whether you're average or fair or not. It's just about doing something. It's about doing something that is basic that helps you move your body, move you know the the limp you know the limp node system, all the things within your body, moving the tissue, the muscle, all that sort of stuff. And so whether that's you know going for a run. Whether that's yoga, whether that's, you know, uh, just, you know, Qigong in the park, uh, any of those sorts of things, they're all great for you. And however you want to compartmentalize it, and if you want to do a little bit of them or you want to do a lot of them, it's all okay. So that, you know, again, is kind of, you know, a lot of the aspect of fitness and, and the things that we talk about, you know, in this uh in this book here. And then um the focus, you know, focus is pretty much exactly how it sounds right? We're so distracted. We're so distracted by our phones. We're so distracted by uh, media. We're so distracted by 
other people's demands of us of what we need to do and how we need to do it that a lot of times we find ourselves not compartmentalizing or laying down the rules of the game to other people about you know how this is going to work and what i mean by that is, and and i'm so guilty of this i it still am to a point i want to please everybody i want to be everybody's friend right and by doing that, I feel that, you know, if I don't acknowledge somebody, whether it be via text, answering the phone, email, any of that right away, I'm not doing my job as a friend, a person, a business person, a husband, any of that sort of stuff. Um, really, the only person that I should be responding to immediately, uh, you know, when it's not, say, case emergency, is my wife. I mean, bottom line, you know, she is my soul, my, my heart, my everything. And so focus really comes down to me reevaluating my life and what goes on within it and who's important to that and how not to be, you know, a slave to the grind basically for, for all of those things. And the other part of focus that comes into play is really just calming the mind. It's backing away from all of that stuff and figuring out what your meditation is. And when I use the word meditation, I don't mean like you're sitting cross-legged and, you know, you're alming your way to wherever it is that you want to go. I mean, meditation is literally just clearing your mind. That could be going Going for a walk and you know looking for lizards in the mountain which I do a lot uh, you know or looking at birds bird watching I love that that's a form of meditation to me uh, playing guitar you know I take about 10 to 20 minutes a day to play guitar um, and the only thing I'm focused on is that fretboard and you know learning how not to suck at something uh, I'm not thinking about you know Joe's uh, apartment complex I need to ensure or Sally's restaurant that you know just burnt down I you know I, I have time and um, place to think about all that and to take care of all that and so compartmentalizing a lot of that focus um, and mindset is just really really important to me. And I know that if you learn these skills and these crafts, um, not only will it become important to you, but it'll absolutely change your life. Because then what you'll be able to do uh, by compartmentalizing is really helping people with the aspect of when they um, you know, need something or are in need, you can get to it, you can be efficient, and you can accomplish and finish those tasks. Um, and you can create the boundaries and the legwork for how you want that done. And they will come to that understanding. And if they don't, then maybe they're just not supposed to be a part of, you know, your life. And I'm not talking about being lazy here, people. No, that's not, that's not what it is. I'm not talking about walking away from work and not doing things. I'm talking about doing it on your timeline and laying out the rules of engagement and how that contract works with another person in essence that respects them getting what they need, but also respects you being able to perform at a high and optimal level because you're not deleted or burnt out from everything else. And so focus through meditation, however you want to look at that, relaxes the mind, the brain, gives you a little bit of time on your own and lets you come back and be an absolute killer for others. So those are the three Fs. That's what I wanted to bring to you today. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the podcast. Please leave me a five star. Um, it really helps. I'm really building up this network. Uh, again, the Built Different Mastermind. We've got some great things planned ahead. If you are interested, apply. Please subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Uh, would really appreciate it. And check out the links below for the Connect and Protect and all the other things that we do. And until next time, peace out.